Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we may be seated. These words from our text this morning on this Easter morning, Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. This is the text. We all need to see Jesus. Interesting this week, uh, Ruth was looking through the newspaper and found out that 60-some percent of people are Googling the word church this week. What do you think that means? Perhaps there's folks that haven't been there for a while. Perhaps it's the need to be reminded about what Easter is really all about. Is it the possibility that the world needs to see Jesus? Well, we all know the answer. And thank God you're here today to see through the eyes of faith what took place on that first Easter morning. Perhaps you've said these words or have heard these words. It was just a blur. I don't have to take you too far back to understand when that might have happened. Just go to Brussels, Belgium. I don't know if you've heard or not or watched the news. It's interesting this morning when I turned on the news to get the latest bad news, I didn't get any. Because it's Easter. You can't have bad news going across the screen on Easter, can you? Even the secular world wants to avoid talking about things that are bad on Easter. <clears throat> in Brussels, Belgium, people from 40 different countries were injured. There are some who lost their life, at least two from the United States of America. And evil still is there. Go back to Paris. Now go back to California. Go back to September 11th, 2001. Does that ring a bell for you? Evil is still there. And yet the one who has overcome evil is the one who rose from the grave for us on Easter morning. We have to admit there are times that we are so much like those at first Easter that sometimes we are in a blur. We get that news that something happened. For some this Easter, it's the first Easter after they've lost a loved one. You know about the phone calls. Perhaps you've been involved as a child or as an adult. Someone's taken to the hospital, you expect them to get better, and they don't. Or perhaps it's the blur of expecting a teenager home, and they don't arrive the way they were supposed to. Or you find out someone in your family has an addiction, and now it's coming out and everybody has to deal with it, and it seems to be just a blur. What was it like for Mary Magdalene and Peter and John and the disciples that first Easter morning? They did not yet have a clue. Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb. What did she expect to find? A body, right? She had no understanding about what the resurrection was all about yet. She went and what she found was only a missing body, not the risen Lord. Peter and John, after they go, as you read the text this morning, they left the scene puzzled. They said they did not yet understand the scripture. Why didn't they get it? How many times did he tell them? How many times does he have to tell us? The whole story. His death for our sins. His resurrection for our hope of the resurrection. How about the rest of the disciples? Were they in a blur? Certainly they were. They were in hiding. They were behind closed doors. Locked in because they were afraid of the Jews. And all of this because of poor spiritual hindsight. Not looking back, not understanding completely what the Lord had done for them. How about us? Is this so much different for us? Everything in our life, and this is something I've come to realize over 70 years of life, Everything has a spiritual nature to it. Nothing in our life is without a spiritual nature. Go back to your birth. Did you have anything to do with it? I don't think so. God, our creator, has given us life. And from that point on, he cares about us. From our baptism until the time we're taken home to be with the Lord, he cares about us. There's nothing in our life that isn't spiritual. Take a walk, God goes with you. Go to sleep. God watches over you. Can I help you out in more understanding this? Everything is spiritual. But when we look at it, we wonder why the undesired situations come. Situations close to home. Perhaps news that comes at us like a freight train out of control. Do you all know what freight trains are? Just, you know, they're still on the road. They're still there. 
and something comes at us and we just can't avoid it. We know it's there. For some of us, it's aging. You can't stop it. Many of us, if not all of us, are at least one day older today than we were yesterday. Did you stop it? Can you turn it back? No way. Situations in the world. We too are captured by what's taking place in the world around us. We were told on Friday evening that perhaps a priest would be crucified by ISIS. Whether that happened or not, I don't know, but it's really possible. I got online, went to the UK newspapers, and at least this priest was arrested and four nuns were killed. Did you hear anything about that recently? Nobody wants to talk about that. People kill for their faith. It doesn't make good news. And there are times and situations where we just have too much eyesight. You know what eyesight is? It's looking at ourselves and not looking at anything else. I don't know about you, but there are times in my life that I'd rather have God see things my way than to see things His way. Remember what God says in Isaiah, my ways are above your ways. You're not going to understand everything. Commit yourself to the Lord, trust in Him, and He will care for you. Quite often our eyesight is often sin sight. Thank God on this Easter, Christ leads us to see. First of all, He leads us to see the resurrection from the dead is different. There's a big difference between Lazarus and Jesus. Remember Lazarus? Jesus brought him back to life. You know what the cause of Lazarus' death was? Illness. What was the cause of Jesus' death? Your sin. My sin. The sin of the world. How about the grave clothes of Lazarus? If you read the story about Lazarus, when he was brought back to life, they had to unwrap him. He was mummified already in the sense that they had him wrapped in grave clothes. But not Christ. When they went in and saw the tomb, it was empty, and everything was neatly placed where it was supposed to be. But Jesus was not there. <coughs> Lazarus, surrounded by mourners when he died. Jesus, surrounded by thieves and murderers when he died. Christ, surrounded by our sins. Yes, on this Easter morning, we thank God that Jesus offers perfect spiritual hindsight. I think it's significant. I didn't point this out. Some professor did at the seminary. That's why I wanted you to notice the word see and saw. We all want to pick on Thomas, don't we? Doubting Thomas. He wasn't there, didn't see. What does Jesus do? He shows them. Right? And then Thomas says, my God and my Lord. Seeing and believing is intertwined. Mary Magdalene, she sees Jesus. Peter and John, they see Jesus. The other disciples, they see Jesus. And because of their seeing and believing, what has happened over the centuries of time? What has happened is we see and we believe with the eyes of faith. Oh, Jesus did say, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. But why do we believe? It's the work of the Holy Spirit and that message that has gone on and will go on until the Lord returns. Seeing and believing is intertwined. The deeds of Jesus, one professor says, all point to this greatest or summation of the signs. I said this before in a sermon. Maybe you were here. Have you ever seen anybody come back from the dead? I mean, literally. I mean, I'm not talking about the four minutes cardiac arrest thing. I'm talking about being dead for a day. I haven't. How many people saw Jesus Christ after his resurrection? 500. Is that enough for you? I think it's enough for me. And because of Jesus seeing his beloved disciples, sharing the hope of the resurrection of the dead, that message is ours today. Listen to what Jesus says to Mary Magdalene. Tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. You understand what he's saying there? I have a Heavenly Father, you do too. And I'm going to him, and he does. I call that the ascension. To the disciples, and beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. I hope you brought your lunch, because we're going to start with Moses and the prophets. And then when we get done with that, we'll go to the New Testament, and then we'll read the book of Revelation. Everybody interested? Probably not. 
can you imagine Jesus Christ he gave the condensed version of what took place with Moses delivered to the Israelites from the Egyptians and the prophets, especially Isaiah, stricken, smitten, and afflicted on Good Friday, risen from the dead, the hope of everlasting life. It was there from the beginning of God's word to the end. And it's there for us today as well. For most of us, almost all of us here today, we learned what about, about Jesus Christ in Sunday school. That's what it was called, Sunday school. Today, it continues in Sunday service and much more. Uh, my wife and I have daily devotion. We do it individually. But still, every day when we read those scriptures and we take those devotions to heart, we grow in our understanding. I encourage you to do the same. Take a look at God's Word. Compare to what you see going on in the world and give thanks to God that He's still in control. In my personal prayers, I do not, I am not worried about the political election this year. You know why? God's still in charge. Vote! I dare you. Okay? But vote for God, too. Submit yourself to Him. Let Him know that you trust Him more than any political ruler this side of heaven. Christ leads us to look to him now and in the future when everything seems a blur. Is it possible that before the day is over, the week is over, the month is over, there will be a blur in your life? It's possible. But Jesus sees that blur. And Jesus wants to go through that blur with you. We're going to be praying for a young boy a friend of Coleman's who was in the hospital when he was there, who uh, had leukemia, was treated, and now they found a, a, a tumor, possibly malignant, most probably not, and he was air flown to Children's Hospital. Isn't that a blur? We don't know what's going to happen there. God does. We're going to commend him into God's care. Everything seems to blur sometimes when we see our sins so clearly. When was the last time you saw your sins so clearly? Doesn't take long, does it? Uh, perhaps even on the way here this morning. Or maybe even when you leave the door. But it will happen. When you see your sin clearly, look to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. We are led on this Easter morning to see our Savior supernaturally. <coughs> Supernatural means above reason. Bread and wine? Yes. Body and blood? Yes, we see Jesus through the eyes of faith today. And he comes to us and offers us forgiveness of sins, strengthening of our faith, so we can face those days tomorrow and the days to come. But one day this will all come to a close. Paul writes, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, and with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Perhaps there's another lesson we can learn from our own past and take with us this Easter. Never forget. Never forget. That little card you got, you can take it out and look at it. I have a big one up here that says, Never Forget. All I have to say to you is probably September 11, 2001, and you can see evil at its worst. Over 3,000 people killed in the Twin Towers went down. All you have to do is see Good Friday and see the Prince of Evil at his worst. And yet it's helpful that we can see something good come out of something bad. A naval vessel has been built from the scrap metal of Twin Towers. It's called the USS New York. When the scrap metal came from New York City down to Louisiana, the steel workers, seeing the metal arriving, were moved to some kind of reverence. They treated this steel differently than any other steel they had ever handled. They were emotionally stirred at times when they did not expect to be moved. The USS New York, the model on the hull of the ship, never forget it. Never forget it. I encourage you to take this little card home with you. Put it somewhere. Your refrigerator, carry it with you in your pocket. Put it in your car. Bring it back next Easter. You notice 
that never forget is in the shape of the cross. Good Friday, we covered the crucifixes with a black veil. In our church here, we need to see both the crucifix and the empty cross. Good Friday and Easter. Without Easter, Good Friday is just good. But with Easter, we see the risen Lord. You'll notice in the middle of your cross, there is a red letter V. That V stands for victory. We have victory over sin and death through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. I encourage you, let's respond this Easter by praying, Lord Jesus Christ, let us never, ever forget it. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God be with all of us as we continue to worship him, our risen Lord and Savior. It's our opportunity now to stand and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed as they're found in our worship bulletin. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us in the conscious Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and on the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended to heaven and stood to the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory judge for the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is together in this worship and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church, 